So, so for this edition of history, and <laughs> I can't even get the words out. So for this edition of history and Christianity, I have Abraham Lincoln on my mind, and uh, I'm laughing because it's literally true. I have Lincoln on my hand. Well, it's, or maybe it's just his hat on my head. Well, actually, this is this is really not even a Lincoln hat. It was just a some goofy party hat that. I saw and I said, hey, that would be good for my podcast, at least for the video part. But anyways, it's President's Day weekend. You know what that means, right? Time to get those uh, great deals on appliances and all other stuff that's on sale. You know, actually, I remember reading about um, looking at an old copy, a reprint of the Declaration of Independence. This has nothing to do with today's uh, podcast, but I it just popped into my head because of how the commercialization of these holidays um, are not actually anything new. But this Declaration of Independence was like from, from the 1800s and um, it was a reprint of the Declaration of its entirety. And then on the bottom there was an ad for uh, like the merchant who had paid for these declarations to be handed out. So it was a clever little uh, marketing ploy there to hand out the Declaration on, on the 4th and then um, promote your own business. But when I saw that, I said, wow, this this uh, commercialization is nothing new, folks. It's not. It goes way back. There's a nice, strong history of tying holidays with uh, sales. So it's always a celebration of, uh, of capitalism in America when it comes to holidays, isn't it? All right. So for uh, President's Day, I am thinking about Abraham Lincoln. I'm actually reading the... Uh, um, from volume three of Carl Sandburg's uh, Abraham Lincoln biography and it is The War Years volume three. It's actually a good read. Uh, this is actually not, you know, it's not perfect by any stretch but uh, it is a nice read if you want to really get a good picture of some of what life was like. I think I'm gonna just remove this hat because it's kind of bugging me already there we go all right I think that's much better all right so what I want to talk about today in this brief time that I have by the way if you're uh, your first time here what you need to know about me is that I like to study the past but I don't want to live in the past and if you want to know about more than that just visit my website, my first name and my last name, dot com, Adolfo Mendez dot com. So, um, what I want to share is one story about Abraham Lincoln. And Abraham Lincoln himself, of course, the 16th president, like to tell a lot of stories. You can tell a lot of stories about him. This is not the Honest Abe story of, of elementary school uh, for this History and Christianity podcast. I wanted to talk about the story that you won't find on Wikipedia, which is a story about um, a minister who had met with Lincoln and decided to put all of his comments, all the comments that the president had made about religion and Christianity together in one form, in one page, and uh, presented as everything Lincoln believes about religion. In other words, Lincoln's creed. In fact, that's what he called it, Lincoln's uh, creed, Abraham Lincoln's creed, if you were just to base it on all of those public comments that uh, he had made. And actually, I looked up some of these, and you can Google it and find that some of these comments he made, you know, either to newspapers or to, um, you know, in proclamations and official government documents and so forth. But um, of course, Lincoln met with, I think, almost virtually every religious denomination during the Civil War. And um, he writes and it quotes in this book that he he never had a uh, bad encounter with any of them. And he was certainly never um, dismissive of them or rude. In fact, it sounds like he was generally interested in what they had to say, although he wasn't always moving as fast as they perhaps wanted. They certainly behind the scenes pushed him on the whole emancipate emancip they certainly behind the scenes uh, really pushed him to uh, move forward with things like the Emancipation Proclamation. So um, as part of just 
the whole movement by evangelical Christianity to end slavery during this time. But I want to focus on, again, not something you could just read in Wikipedia, what this minister came up with. If you were to take Abraham Lincoln's statements, put them all together in a credo format, and of course, I think one of the oldest uh, Christian creeds is the um, the Apostles' Creed, uh, and you know those are those statements I believe um, in, and then so forth. You know, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. But these, uh, so this minister actually modified Lincoln's uh, statements on religion to just insert the words at the beginning of each sentence, the word "I believe." So it's Lincoln's creed. What does Lincoln believe? So I want to dive right into that and uh, just go over this. And so here's how it begins. It says that um, a clergyman sought to formulate such a creed from Lincoln's own words, changing the text merely to the extent of uh, transpo uh, transposing pronouns from plural to singular, making other slight modifications, and prefixing the words, I believe. In other words, just what I just told you. All right. And here's what it is. This is what would be the declarations of the um, public man, Abraham Lincoln. This is the result of taking all of his comments and statements and writings and putting it together as a creed format. He starts off like this, Lincoln's words. Maybe I should have this. There we go. Now I can't do a Lincoln voice, but maybe this will be more apropos. All right. I believe it is fit and becoming in all people at all times to acknowledge and revere the supreme government of God, to bow in humble submission to his chastisements, to confess and deplore their sins and transgressions, in the full conviction that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and to pray with all fervency and contrition for the pardon of their past offenses and for a blessing upon their present and prospective action. Now, one of the things you'll pick up is that uh, Lincoln was clearly biblically literate. A lot of his phrasing and expressions do come directly from the Bible, in particular when he says from the book of Proverbs, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. But continuing, he says, I believe in our beloved country, now afflicted with faction and civil war, it is peculiarly fit for us to recognize the hand of God in this terrible visitation. I believe that the united prayer of the nation may ascend to the throne of grace. I believe it has pleased Almighty God to vouchsafe victories to the land and naval forces engaged in suppressing an internal rebellion Wherefore, they should especially acknowledge and render thanks to our Heavenly Father for, the, for these inestimable blessings. He says, I believe it is the duty of nations as well as of men to own their dependence upon the overruling power of God, to confess their sins and transgressions in humble sorrow, yet with assured hope that genuine repentance will lead to mercy and pardon and to recognize the sublime truth announced in the Holy Scriptures and proved by all history that those nations only are blessed whose God is Lord. I believe we may justly fear that the awful calamity of civil war which now desolates the land may but be punishment and inflicted upon us for our presumptuous sins to the needful end of our national reformation as a whole people. So here's an indication where at the time he said these words anyways, he viewed what was going on, civil war, punishment inflicted upon America for our presumptuous sins. Now he says this about American success. I believe that intoxicated and unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient. I believe that intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace, too proud to pray to the God that made us.
I believe it behooves us to humble ourselves before the offended power, to confess our national sins, and to pray for clemency and forgiveness. I believe in national humiliation, fasting, and prayer, in keeping a day holy to the Lord, devoted to the humble discharge of the religious duties proper to such a solemn occasion. I believe in hopes authorized by the divine teachings that the united cry of the nation will be heard on high. I believe in him whose will, not ours, should be done. And of course, that's an uh, obvious reference to the Lord's Prayer, where Jesus in the New Testament states, not my will, but thy will be done. Abraham Lincoln continues, I believe the people of the United States, in the forms approved by their own conscience, should render their homage due to the divine majesty for the wonderful things he has done on the nation's behalf and invoke the influence of his Holy Spirit to subdue anger. Now that's probably the most um, one of the most theologically heavy comments there, to invoke the influence of his Holy Spirit to subdue anger. That would uh, suggest a belief in uh, a triune God, the statement anyways, um, given how it's phrased here. I believe in bounties so extraordinary they cannot fail to penetrate and soften the heart habitually insensible to the ever watchful providence of Almighty God. I believe no human counsel hath devised nor hath any mortal hand worked out these great things we have received. They are gracious gifts of the Most High God, who while dealing with us in anger for our sins hath nevertheless remembered mercy. Now that's also a fascinating comment. Think about this, you're the President of the United States, you're in the middle of a civil war, and your thoughts reflect on this, that the things we have received are the gracious gifts of the Most High God. Interesting phraseology. Not just a God, but the Most High God who, while dealing with us in anger for our sins, hath nevertheless remembered mercy. That's interesting that uh, in the midst of the Civil War, a, a president could think that a God who is both angry and merciful could be overseeing the affairs of the nation, um, in particular because of the fact that uh, Lincoln also was well known for his, his sense of humor and the book here gives several examples about how even in the midst of, of suffering he would joke. Interesting too though that uh, one of the commentaries said that even after uh, joking around and uh, cheering people up, afterwards you could see a serious somberness to his face. So it was as if he was um, trying to do everything he can with every fiber of his being to um, not get overtaken in a um, you know a spirit of, of defeatism and negativity um, but he took it upon himself as a leader to to really try to change both the mood and the um, realities of a nation so he writes or he says rather I believe in the interposition of the Almighty Hand to heal the wounds of the nation and to restore it as soon as it may be consistent with the divine purposes to the full enjoyment of peace, harmony, tranquility, and union. Interesting here is an acknowledgement that it's really God's timing, uh, as much as he'd like to see that war be over, that it will happen, he says, as soon as it's consistent with the divine purposes. Whatever those may be, he's saying, when God has had enough of this, it's going to be over. I believe in penitential and pious statements, in devotional designs and purposes, in homages and confessions, in supplications to the Almighty, solemnly, earnestly, reverently. I believe in blessings and comfort from the Father of mercies to the sick, the wounded, the prisoners, 
and to the orphans and widows. I believe it pleases Almighty God to prolong our national life, defending us with his guardian care. I believe in his eternal truth and justice. I would love to have had a conversation with him just to, you know, explore some of these uh, words and concepts and have him flesh it out a little bit more. His eternal truth and justice. God's justice. We hear a lot about justice. What do you mean God's justice? I believe the will of God prevails. Without him, all human reliance is vain. Without the assistance of that divine being, I cannot succeed. With that assistance, I cannot fail. Interesting here. A reflection of an utter reliance on a supreme being, the supreme being. He says, I believe I am a humble instrument in the hands of our Heavenly Father. I desire that all my works and acts may be according to his will and that it may be so. I give thanks to the Almighty and seek his aid. I believe in praise to the Almighty God, the beneficent creator and ruler of the universe. I believe in praise to the Almighty God, the creator and ruler of the universe. And that's where it ends, this uh, Abraham's Lincoln Creed. Again, Lincoln uh, is a very uh, fascinating uh, character. Uh, and I hope if you have some time on this President's Day weekend, you'll, you'll take um, this encourages you to study even further and learn more about him. Many, many more stories that can be said and shared. I want to go back to a comment I made earlier. Many who came away, this is Carl Sandburg's quote, many who came away from seeing Lincoln carried a dominant and lasting impression of him as a sober and sad man, his lapses into wit or humor fading most often into the austere or the abstracted. So certainly a man of, of actually depth and complexity, an interesting historical figure, certainly worthy of our attention this President's Day or any other day. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you subscribe and do me this favor. If you really enjoy this podcast, share it with your friends, with others, let them know. And be sure to subscribe so that you can know when the next episode is available.